Okay, so the first exercise, you need a, um, a padded surface that's uh, quite a firm edge, so like a, something like a padded chair, uh, or um, the massage table's fine, or um, a weights bench is ideal. So what we're going to do is place the, the lip of the, um, uh, the bench in the middle of, the, uh, of your thoracic spine, that's the part of the spine where the rib cage comes out of, and we're going to try and open up uh, some of those joints. Um, so what I'm going to do is place the, um, uh, the bench in the middle of my back, and then I'm going to reach over and grab hold of the side of the, um, the massage table or bench or whatever. And then I'm going to place my head back onto the, uh, onto the bench, and then push my hips down towards the ground so my thoracic spine curves around the lip of the bench. I'm going to come down and hold in that position for 10 to 15 seconds. Try and take some small, shallow breaths and then come out and then I'm going to move further up into another part of my thoracic so I continue to work through several different positions through my back. Okay, so the next exercise is cat-cow. Uh, what we're going to do is come down onto all fours. Now you want your shoulders over, uh, over your hands and then your knees are going to be underneath your hips. Now what I'm going to do here is imagine that I've got an elastic band running between uh, the base of my, my, uh, my neck and the base of my spine and I want to try and stretch that elastic band over as much as I possibly can do. So what I'm going to do is push up into my um, um, cat, cow, I can never remember which way, which way it is. <laughs> so push up into um, the position and then I'm going to contract all of this muscles, all these muscles down the front to squeeze up even more into that position and then to assist even further, I'm going to try and push my hands this way across the floor to increase that arch through my spine. So I'm going to push into it, hold for 10 to 15 seconds, taking shallow breaths, and then come back down and through to the other way. Now, as I come to the other direction, I'm going to imagine elastic bands between this point and this point, and I'm going to think about expanding my chest to push that elastic band and stretch out as far as I can. So. Here I come down into my, um, my cow, I'm then going to squeeze with my, my back muscles to drive my chest further forwards into it, and this time I'm going to pull my hands this way to accentuate that curvature all the way through my spine, and then take some shallow breaths there, hold for 10 to 6, 15 seconds, and then continue with the other exercise. Okay, so the next one is a modification of the cat-cow exercise we've done before. Um, really in, in, in life, um, it's not just good enough to be able to arch both ways, but we really want to be able to do kind of fine, uh, fine controls uh, with our spine, so this helps with that. So I'm going to come back into my um, uh, cat position. I'm going to arch fully again and stretch out the, uh, the elastic band, pushing as far as I can. Then what I'm going to do is take my lower back, my hips, into um, extension, you'll see that that wave gradually moves up through the rest of my spine, all the way up to my middle back, and into my neck, and then I come up back into my full um, cow position, and then I start my pelvis and my lower back, and that tucks underneath, and then that wave moves slowly up my spine, through to my middle thoracics, and then finishing with my neck, so I'm trying to create a kind of wave formation rather than just, uh, just the usual cat-cow. Okay, so the next one's called uh, Elevated Stretching Cat. So I need a chair for this one. What I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to put my hands onto the chair, but I really want to kind of make sure that this whole part of my hand is in contact. I don't want to just put my fingertips because they're going to flip up and I'm going to end up um, eating the dirt. So I'm going to come down, hands come onto the bench, and then I want my knees pretty much under the, underneath my hips, and then I'm going to drive down towards the ground and open up through the thoracic spine again. Now with this one, if I've got a partner here, then they can put some pressure down into the, uh, into the middle of my back, in between my rib cage, and they can just kind of assist me down into that stretch so I can go a little bit deeper. Again, hold for 10 to 15 seconds and take some shallow breaths when you're down there, um, and uh, you can repeat this one three or four times. Okay, so the next one is a, uh, a modification of the spinal wave we did in the uh, cat-cow. This time we're going to do it against the wall. 
So what I'm going to do is to start off, I'm going to place my forehead and make contact with the wall, and I want my feet maybe um, half a foot back away from the wall. Place the forehead down onto the wall. Now, what I'm going to do is, as I take my forehead off the wall, I'm going to switch with my nose, and then as I take my nose off the wall, I switch it with my chin. Then I'm going to try and get as far up my chest as possible to make contact with the wall, and then as I roll down, I'm placing one rib at a time all the way down until I make the bottom uh, rib contact the wall. I then put my stomach on the wall, hips, and then lean back until my centre of gravity rebalances, and then I can come back in to forehead, nose, chin, upper chest, through the ribs, stomach, hips, and then I start to kind of free out and try and make it a smoother wave. So you can do these spinal waves in any orientation. So you could go uh, backwards, you place your, fall, your back of your head on the wall, and then through the, the uh, thoracic spine, trying to get each individual vertebra to contact at the time, into the lower back, hips, and then trying to get back to the wall. So wave on the other way. Or I can go off at an angle, so 45 degrees, and then I can forehead, shoulders, ribs, and my shoulder, ribs, and my Okay, good. Uh, okay, so the next uh, exercise is called stretching the archer. Now, I want to take my, my hips past 90 degrees, so if I'm here, then it's going to be uh, I'm going to focus the movement into my lower back and really I want to get this movement to my thoracic spine. So make sure you flex to, to past 90 degrees. I'm going to come down to a sideline position and take a weight into this top hand. Now the, the top hand slides out as far as I can and then I'm going to reach up and take the weight round over, trying to keep the weight in contact with the ground all the way through until I rotate it round into my lying position. Now in this position, if you look down at your knees, you're going to see that there's an angle here that's formed with the top knee is slid back this way. Now that's because my pelvis is um, compensating for the rotation and it's something I'm going to try and avoid. So what I'm going to do is lift this right leg, this um, top leg up and then push it forwards with my hip and place it down over the top of the other one. So I'm now aligning my knees as close to uh, vertical as I can. And then I'm going to lie here and take um, a few short breaths for about 10 to 15 seconds before coming back around and out, out of the position. Cool. Okay, edit out, cool. So the next exercise we need to um, what we're going to do is do some um, thoracic spine rotation. So as a partner, I'm going to help um, you land around into a rotating position here and uh, take her into a bit of a stretch. Now, um, for two minutes, I'm just going to do a passive stretch and take her a little bit further. And then what we're going to do is get a contraction where I'm going to get uh, you land to try and push this left hand forwards and, and, and twist herself back around into uh, a forwards position. And I'm just going to resist that. So we're going to do a contraction for 10 seconds. So we're going to push into that. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. And then I'm just going to take her a little bit further around into that rotation. We do that three times. Uh, from there, what I'm then going to do is, uh, I'm going to uh, create a little block there, and I'm going to get Elanta to try and twist around even further so she takes the stick off my hand and maximizes her rotation. And we're going to hold in that new position for 10 seconds. So go in there, so rotating around, hold for 10, Okay, 
Okay, so for the next exercise, what I'm going to do is um, choose, a, choose a point on my body, um, and we're going to press into that part so I get a good indication of exactly where it is. I'm then going to try and take that through a, um, through a circle. So I'm going to imagine that the circle for this particular exercise is this way, and I'm going to try and take that spot through as big a range of motion as I possibly can there. I'm going to squeeze out as much contraction as I can as I do this. So to start all over the frame, I'm going to take that spot down to the bottom of my circle, and then twist around. And complete my circle. Now I can do this through any, any orientation of circle, so I might want to do it the circle going this way, same spot, it's going to be a totally different movement though. spots anywhere in your body and uh, it, each one's going to feel very, very different and um, get your spine moving in, in uh, different ways. Cool. Okay, so the next one I need a partner and a, uh, a broomstick. Um, so what's going to happen is that um, the partner is going to come at me with the, uh, the tip of the stick and my job is to try and avoid the stick wherever possible. Now I want to do just enough <laughs> To, uh, to avoid the stick. So if she's coming at me, so to, to my face, then I, um, if I was moving my whole body, then I would kind of come like this. But what I want to do is just enough to move the stick. So as it comes in, I can start to articulate through my neck to avoid the stick. If it keeps coming, then I need to move a little bit more of my body until I'm able to avoid the stick. And the stick can come at me from any different direction, and I have to be able to articulate myself around and keep an eye on the stick and try and keep my feet 